Hi there YouTube and makers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I've got a little bit of an unboxing for you on some great equipment that I found that I think is going to be really useful here pretty soon on my make of the Kozo Hiroka Pennsylvania A3 switcher steam locomotive engine in three quarter inch scale in a 040 layout to run on a three and a half inch gauge track. I try to keep all my tools relevant to the ongoing build but also keep them mind open and look for great vintage tools and other pieces that since I've read the book I kind of have an idea of some of the things I'm going to need and just keep an eye out to see if I get lucky and find a good used tool or a vintage tool of a kind of a brand or style that I like. So the first tool I have for you is this little itty bitty one. And I'm going to need a cutting device to get into it. So let's see if I can do this and not cut myself. I have to go to the urgent care. I've managed not to go to the urgent care for a few years, so I'm trying to not do that. But I have a Sterrett 827A. Some of you know what an 827 is. Those of you that don't, a Starrett A27 is a plain edge finder. Very nice, brand new. No corrosion, no markings, except for my grubby little fingers that I just put on. I have a brand new mint, perfect condition edge finder for. A really good price and if you're ever interested in my tools or finding out more information or some of the searches that I put together to look for some of these tools be sure to check out the links below so that's an 827 the next tool I have is actually really important for working on the journal boxes and I don't necessarily need it because I do have the stare at last word dial indicator but it's shown in the book by Kozuhiro Oka. And that is this tool in here. In the book, Kozuhiro Oka tells you that you can make this tool on your own. And indeed, there are seem to be quite a few homebrews that are out there. Kozo doesn't actually show how to make this in the Pennsylvania book. Instead, he defers me to look at the, I want to say it's the Shea, on the instructions on how to make this tool. Well, unfortunately, this tool is needed very early on in the Pennsylvania A3 make in order to do the journal box. Unless, of course, I use a dial indicator. And right now, I think market value I had seen for the Shea book was $50. So about almost the same cost, well not almost, it's about half the cost of obtaining a vintage version of this tool. And it's a bit idiosyncratic to find. I did find a perfect one for the same price, that's absolutely perfect, unbelievably pristine. I waited till the afternoon, or, no I waited till the evening after dinner to kind of to make my mind to get it and it sold. So luckily I found this one slightly more used. And it is old because once dial indicators became prevalent, these just disappeared and were no longer catalog items for a stare or brown and sharp. It is a number 65 stare center test. What is a stare number 65 center test? Besides having a beautiful, I really like this dark, beautiful maroon box. It's paper. No. Um, nicely packaged. I think the seller. Wow, that's big. God. That's bigger than I thought it would look. But that is a Sturt 65 center test. Beautifully made, still. 
a little grimy, but oh man, absolutely beautiful case hardening on here. And it is used, you can see a few wear marks on the case hardening, but and a few grimy marks, but I don't see any damage. The rod is perfectly straight, and you can see it's got this really interesting and complicated. I'm going to try not to move it too much because it's going to need a detail cleaning. But gimbal, I think it's a gimbal. I'm calling it a gimbal because it kind of looks like a ship's gimbal. So this is used in, but it's very big, in a tool holder on the lathe to determine the center of an object in an adjustable chuck. And I really want to show this and push it, but unfortunately it's a little gummy, so I don't want to force it, so I'm going to have to do some detail cleaning. But one of the things that this particularly has that was very fortunate that I came to find out, you know, have it, is you see that little ball at the end? That's removable. And that is for indicating on the inside of a bore. And many of these are missing that little itty bitty bit ball, but mine came with it. So that is a huge bonus. But that ball or that little tip would ride in a center punch mark. And if it isn't centered by lining up my tailstock at the end, I, as it runs, I would be able to see that in that punch mark, there would be variance and wiggling in this bar. And that would tell me how off center. And the closer I get at the center, that variance and that movement is reduced till it's almost nothing and lines up with the tailstock. So that is a Sterrett 65. And it'll be a great use here pretty quickly on making the journal boxes. Oh, one more thing. Yeah, it came with all of it. Good. I was like, I felt like something was missing, but that is also perfectly sturdy. It's like I, it was supposed to come with it, but just forgetting it and then finding it in the box, I feel like you got something a little extra. But that screws in there and makes it even longer. And I don't know if you can see if that comes to a point. Now, one thing with this, though, like I said, it is. I had an idea it was larger. I didn't realize it was this large. So I don't believe it's going to fit in my quarter inch tool holder. So I might need to upgrade to a 3 8 to figure this guy out. But I'm excited to use that. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hopefully you found that useful and maybe a little inspirational. Again, if you're ever interested in finding your own version of the tools that you see me use here, I'll be sure to have a either a link in the description below or a link at the end of the video, something along those lines so you could see the exact search that I use to find these great, really nice vintage tools. I'm really excited and looking forward to sharing them with you on my channel and showing you and demonstrating how I use them in my make of the Pennsylvania A3 Switcher steam locomotive engine in three quarter inch scale to run on a three and a half inch gauge track in a 040 layout as described by Koza Hirooka. So that you never miss another video, be sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you never miss another post. And feel free to comment below as well as share the video. I look forward to demonstrating a lot of this with you. And until next time, have fun out there, stay safe and keep making chips. Mm -hmm.